scripture and it was done. He cursed the tree, the barren tree. And then the following day, they saw that fulfilled. It is what we call the trust table of scripture. And then he gives the word. He said, Abraham, I will visit you. And the following year, Abraham, Sarah, had Isaac. For the present time, or for, or for tomorrow, or for the next year, or for decades, or for centuries. He said, it's a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. That took some hundreds of years because of the purpose of God and the timing of God. The point is whether it is what he will do today, what he will do tomorrow, what he will do next year, whatever, when it's appropriate, according to promise, we have the trust table scripture. And what he promises, healing, salvation, and health, and, and financial breakthrough, the scripture, everything that is promised, trust table. Look at number four. Number four is transparent sanctification. Transparent sanctification. Uh, you know, when we talk of sanctification, it's for everyone. He saves us, he brings us into his family, and he gives us uh, the, the nature of God himself. Here is a human being, and the Lord transferred to him uh, the very nature of God. And it's transparent. It's what the angels can see through. It's what Christ himself can see through. And say, yes, that's the work of my hand. And it will give every one of us in Jesus' name. Look at verse number five. Number five is totally trampled sicknesses. What do I mean by that? It says we have Satan trampled under our feet, all his works trampled under our feet, and all his sicknesses trampled under our feet. And it doesn't matter the name, the nature, and how long standing that disease might have been, we have the promise that will trample under our feet, sickness, Satan, calamity, suffering, everything. And and you can be totally free today. Everything totally, completely, without any stain and without any grain of that work of the devil the remaining in you. That's why Christ came for this purpose. Jesus Christ was manifested that he might destroy all the works of the devil. Look at number six of the promises. This is timely, timeless, supernatural strength timely supernatural strength. Have you noticed uh, what happened in life of, uh, of uh, Samson? He had all the power that all the armies of the Philistines, they couldn't stand before him. If he did it for him, can't he do it for me and for you? His was physical strength. We need strength in our mind and strength in our soul and strength in our inner man that our inner man become so strong that nothing could, de could defeat us. Look at uh, David coming. Uh, he was not only strong in the body, he was not only strong having sharp eyesight to look at Goliath. You know, some people will say Goliath is so big, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't defeat him. David said it the other way. He said, uh, you know, this is the target. Goliath is so big, you can't miss him. He knew that the Lord will direct that stone and to get to the right point and defeat the greatest enemy of the children of Israel. We have that kind of strength from the Lord, supernatural strength from the Lord, timely and timeless. Uh, why, why do we put those two words there, timely for now? At, at this present time, whatever confronts you, and then timeless because no matter the time, no matter the age, and no matter the dispensation you are living in, it is timely. You get it today in Jesus' name. Look at number seven here. Number seven is transferable scriptural solution. Uh, look at that. Transferable uh, scriptural solution. It gives me solution, but I'm not 
not, I'm not a, a kind of a different from who you are. You are a child of God. I'm a child of God. Or maybe you are a sinner and you are intending to be the child of God today. And you said, it's done it for other people. It's going to do it for me. It is transferable. Whatever solutions other people have had and whatever cure other people have had, whatever conversion other people have had, miraculous conversion is transferable. And it's transferred into your life even tonight in Jesus' name. Give me a celebration, amen, that will bring all these blessings to your life. Amen. I come to point number three now. Point number three, I'm looking at princes that bring marvelous solutions. Princes that bring marvelous solutions. Can I tell you something? Most of us, whenever we have any challenge, any problem, anything confronting us, especially what we cannot deal with. And we think, is this the end of life? Am I going to go just like this? You know what we do? We cry. Maybe that's not bad, but we should do more than crying. We complain. Sometimes that's not appropriate. We're complaining to the wrong people. A person is sick and is complaining to somebody who does not even know any iota of way to, uh, to solve the problem. Why are we doing that? A person has financial problem and is, uh, you know, complaining to the poorest man in town, complaining uh, to, the, to the person who is even bankrupt himself. What's that good doing? Whenever we have any challenge, most of us don't think and most of us don't know that the praise of God, the praise of the glory of God will bring the solution. But I want to tell you, praises are powerful because those praises, they bring marvelous solutions in our lives. Let's come back to our text. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 20. Look at verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise. Look at that word, underline that word, and make up your mind, that is what I will do from now on. No complaining, no murmuring, no grumbling, no asking question, why is this and why is that? Why is why? No, no questions anymore. It says when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should Praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And then he says, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Do I have any problem? What do I do? Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Do I have any challenge? Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Am I going through deep waters? And I don't understand how deep it is, but I know I'm almost sinking in the deep water. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Even this kind of sickness that came and the way I feel, I don't even know the name. And when the doctors mention the name is so big and it's so great, I don't know, even how to retain that, but I feel the pain. What's my response? Praise the Lord for his mercy and it forever. The children are about to go to school and I need to pay the school fees and there is nothing. Even to eat is a challenge and to pay house rent is a challenge. What do I do? Praise the Lord for his mercy and it forever. I am threatened and the person threatening said, this one don't have any faith belief that, you know, this will happen. This one is real and we are behind this one. What do I do? Do I fear? Do I tremble? Do I go to hide? Do I keep myself in a dungeon somewhere? What's my response? Praise the Lord for his mercy. Endure it forever and your solution will come. And the triumph will come in your life. And you will praise the Lord and before the blessing comes. And then after the blessing comes, you'll keep on praising the Lord. As you look at uh, this uh, third point now, we're talking about confident praise, not a superficial praise. Not if uh, I'm praising the Lord, but I'm fearing my heart. But I really praise the Lord. It's the confident praises by humble 
honest, holy saints of God. Now, what am I praising God for? And when do we praise the Lord? That's very important. What am I praising the Lord for? And when is the praise? You see, there are people that can smile and laugh after the storm. What if you came to the point you could praise him before the enemy halts? The enemy is still there, like uh, they told the Jehoshaphat, ah, this one, you will not escape it. This one is determined. And they gave him testimonies, bad testimonies. We defeated that, we defeated that, we defeated that, and you will become one of them. And then he sets up the people and they were praising the Lord. Number one, praise him before the enemy calls. The enemy will come to an end. The enemy will stop. The enemy will halt. And all this machinery and everything, everything will crumble and be destroyed. But you will conquer and you will conquer every foe, every enemy, every problem in your life in Jesus' name. But number one, praise him before the enemy holds. Number two, number two is to praise him before the walls fall. Anybody can shout, anybody can sing, anybody can praise the Lord. When the walls fall, the wall of demarcation between you and your destiny, the wall of demarcation between you and your success, the wall of your of a demarcation between you and laughter, between you and joy, and between you and the victory in your life. Anybody can shout and praise after the walls are falling. But you know, for our lives and to follow what the children of Israel under the leadership of Joshua did, they praised the Lord, and as they shouted, the walls fell flat. What if they had said? I cannot praise God now. Look at what I'm going through. We cannot praise God now. Look at the promised land and look at the walls of Jericho between us and that promised land. What if they said that? But no. When Joshua said, shout, they shouted and they praised the Lord before their walls fall. And today you will praise the Lord. And while you are praising the Lord, all your walls will fall in Jesus' name. Look at number three there. Number three is praise him before the feeling of diseases depart. Praise him before the feeling of diseases depart. Uh, you understand uh, that man that came to the Lord and he said, uh, my, my son is at the point of death. And Jesus said, go, thy son liveth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, my son liveth. And he was going back home and his servant came to meet him and said, he said, your son liveth exactly what Jesus said. And then he said, when did the disease, the infirmity, the fever, when did that leave him? They said, at this hour yesterday, at the point Jesus said so, the man had not seen it, but he believed. And as he believed, then he went home, he went on in the joy of the Lord. The same thing as we are prayed for tonight, and is confirmed by the word of God, and the name of Jesus that cannot fail, you are praising him when you are going back home before the feeling of diseases depart. We're looking at number four here. Number four, praise him, believing the spoken word. Praise him, believing the spoken word. That's what that centurion did. And the centurion said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only. The word only, the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And uh, Jesus said, I've not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And then he said, as you have believed, so be it unto you. You understand that? Not uh, as your enemies decree, no. Not as your uh, foes uh, desire, never. And not as, you know, the people around you, not that they wish you, okay, they will wish you well, but you know, in their heart, there's another thing, but at the spoken word, understand, in your life from today, 
say amen. In your life from today, your life will be as a believer, the spoken word. And as you got back home, the servant was totally healed. And as you get back home, all the members of your body serving you as your servant, and they are completely made whole in Jesus' name. Look at number five. Number five, praise him before the prison doors open. You remember Paul and Silas? They had done a good work for the Lord, and the good work they have done for the Lord was misinterpreted, misplaced, misconstrued by uh, the people that were masters of that lady. Because they had said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And the devil came out. They were angry, and then they took them and put them in the prison. They beat them. And then at midnight, the midnight of sorrow, the midnight when everybody was asleep, but they were awake. The midnight when it appears, everything is upside down for you and for me. The midnight when it appears, are we going to go through life like this? Instead of complaining, once again I remind you, don't complain. Instead of criticizing, instead of saying, God, where are you? Where are you? The people that are asking God such a question, and what, uh, I don't know what to use for that kind of question. Jesus, God had been from all eternity. He was at the point of creation. Then he was with Israel. He did all this mighty thing. And was saying, where is God? God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. Our problems will never shift God from the throne. They were at the midnight of their problem. And then what did they do? They prayed and they sang praises unto the Lord. They were sitting in prison. They prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. And it was midnight. It was dark, not even the light of a candle, but then uh, they sang and gave praises unto the Lord. And the doors were unlocked, but they sang and gave praises unto the Lord. And while they were praising the Lord, that's our secret. While they were praising the Lord, the foundation of the prison shook. The foundation of the prison was shake in Jesus' name. All the doors were open, the windows were open, and their shackles and their chains, everything they totally lose. They praised the Lord before the prison doors opened. That's the lesson we're learning before, before the miracle, before the signs and the wonders, before the healing, before the fig tree dried up. We praise the Lord. Look at number six there. Number six, praise him before the leprosy appears cleansed. These ten lepers came to the Lord and they said, they said, Lord, have mercy on us. They wanted cleansing. They wanted total uh, healing. And Jesus just said, go show yourself to the priest. They didn't say, is that all? No prayer? No touch? No shaking, no pouring, whatever on us, no anointing us. He just said, go show, show yourself to the priest. And he went joyfully. They were not disappointed. They were not complaining. If we can turn our faith around and understand that when God says it, it is done. And so we go on. We are alive and we are lively. We are happy. We are joyful. And we know the problem is so it says while they were going, all the ten of them Without exception, they were totally cleansed. And one man there is Samaritan. He was so excited. And then he ran by all the others who are going. You know, sometimes you have to have a mind of your own, a decision of your own. Look at that nine. They were going. And he came back unto the Lord. And we praises unto the Lord. And Jesus said, Were well, there not ten claims where are the other nine? Except this Samaritan. He said, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Remember, he was already cleansed from leprosy. But now it's uh, Jesus said, Because of the praise. Because of glorifying the Lord. He said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Any other sin that needs to be touched and transformed and healed and uh, totally delivered from your faith has made you whole. Look at number seven. In number seven, praise him before seeing the tree dried up. 
The tree dried up. There are fruitless trees. There are unprofitable trees. There are, you know, trees that just ruin and wreck our lives. And then Jesus said, no man eat fruit of that tree forever. And then he looked away. It's like, uh, you know, disciples were saying, uh-uh. Did anything happen? Did anything happen? The second day they came and they saw the tree from the root had totally dried up. We praise him. We know that whatever he says is performed. And whatever he says in your life tonight, and whatever he decrees in your life tonight, everything is done. Amen. Amen, it is done. But we we'll praise him before seeing the tree dried up. Jehoshaphat set up the singers and they praised the holiness of the Lord and the name of the Lord and they praised him for the answer that they had not seen. And as we come today and uh, we're praising the Lord, first of all, we must give our life to the Lord. And we we'll just say, the God who can do all this. He is going to be my savior. He is going to be my shepherd. He is going to be my security. He is going to be my fortress. He is going to be my healer. He is going to be my deliverer. He is going to be all in all for me. And therefore, I give everything of my heart, of my soul, of my life. I give unto him that we come into the family. And then we make a request before the Lord for healing, for breakthrough, for deliverance, for anything, for everything. And when we hear the final amen, then we'll begin to praise the Lord and good things will happen in every life in Jesus' name. Eyes bowed and eyes closed. We're going to call upon the Lord now. You want to give your life to the Lord that this great God, this mighty God, and this God that works in possibilities in every life, that he'll become your father. He'll become your God. He'll become your Redeemer. And at the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ will avail for you. Where are you there? Raise up your hand. The Lord is going to do it. And where are you there? Whether you're on television or you are on the radio, you are online, anywhere you are. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is your time. Your moment of salvation, your moment of forgiveness, your moment of freedom. Freedom, your moment of coming into the book of life. Raise up that hand. Please stand up, stand up wherever you are. On the right hand side, left hand side, at the back there, over there, everywhere, anywhere you are, over the television, over the radio, online. This is the moment of salvation and forgiveness and freedom for you. Thank you. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. Please uh, keep on standing and let that, let that hand, uh, you know, be uh, kept up as I pray with you now. Turn away from your sin, turn away from your evil, turn away uh, from everything that is uh, not of God in your life and say, Lord, here am I. I give myself completely unto you. We're praying together now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for what you've done already. I thank you for all these that have uh, raised up their hands and they're giving their lives unto you unreservedly. And they're going to love you now with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind. And they believe in you that what you have said, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That you will fulfill it for every life, for every boy, every girl, every man, every woman, everyone, everywhere. Grant them your forgiveness and your salvation right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. I know it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody shout, Amen. Now, the, our, our counselors will go around now and they give you the sleeves to feel and uh, say the correct thing, do the correct thing there. And the Lord himself has written your name in the book of life. But we need to do this so that we can follow up on you, new members of the family of God. And the joy of salvation will continue in your life 
in Jesus' name. We ask our uh, coordinating uh, overseer there to please take over. And uh, in every family, you will see all those things, uh, the information on the screen there. And the Lord confirm the salvation in your life in Jesus. Let's do this quickly. And then I'll come back uh, to pray for you that all your challenges and all the problems, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Congratulations for those that have just given their lives to Christ. You stood up. Keep standing now. And our orchards, we move quickly to them. Give them the sleep to feel. And please feel it correctly because it will enable us to be of further assistance and help to you. You are standing up. Can I see your hand up? Those who are standing up, can you wave your hand, please? Thank you. Keep standing, please. Keep standing. Ushers, please quickly get to them now and uh, give them a sleep to feel. And please, preferably, we want you to fill them in capital letters, very legibly. Your correct name, your address, Please do that now. Our counselors are around you. Please keep standing until you are attended to. If you have not been attended to, keep standing. They will come around you and give you, you know, the sleep to feel. They will also give you a special package from the covenant, our Father in the Lord. Please do that. God bless you mightily. For those online, if you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link, gckhq.org slash connect. So we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. The radio and television audience, you also can see the number, the phone number, right before you on your screen there. You can get in touch with us on WhatsApp. The number is plus... Two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three and I want to inform you that there will be a special meeting called the Believer's uh, Class for all those who gave their life to Jesus during this program. One hour before the commencement of the crusade. That means it's starting from tomorrow and Tuesday. Don't forget, one hour before the crusade. That means that you have to be here by 4 o'clock. If the crusade is starting by 5, we expect you here by 4 o'clock tomorrow for the, the believer's class. There will be special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their life to Christ on Sunday, that is to, uh, the 4th of June, coming Sunday, 2023. More details about these will be sent to you. Our pastor, our Father in the Lord, We'll be highly delighted to have you join this special banquet. There will also be a special physical banquet for those who gave their lives to Christ from all physical locations in your group, your region, your state, and nations. 
on Saturday, I mean Sunday, 4th June, 2023. Details also will be communicated to you. If you've just received your miracle, please share your testimony with us via the WhatsApp number being displayed or testimony link on the screen. You can also record a video of your testimony and share with us via WhatsApp and Telegraph. Please, let's do that. Ushers, have you attended to them? If you have not received your own um, sleep and package, you can wave your hand here so that we can see you and you can be promptly attended to. Our Father in the Lord will be shortly coming up to pray for you. <laughs> the devil is in trouble. I say the devil is in trouble because he's praying with anointing that cannot be challenged by any power, either on earth, under the earth, anywhere they are found. The power of God, the anointing of God will destroy all the works of the devil. You believe each other loud, amen. Loud. A, an amen that will embarrass the devil. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It's time now to get a miracle. You will get your miracle. You will get your healing. Whatever it is you are asking the Lord for, the Lord will do it and the praises of the Lord will be in your mouth in Jesus. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. And then present that problem to the Lord and in your word, according to his spoken word, his written word, that thing will be done in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray now. Lay your hand where you have the challenge and raise up the other hand and the power of the Lord will take everything that should not be in your life, in your body, in your family, will take everything away. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. We thank you for the examples you've shown us in scripture that as we ask you, you always answer and you answer immediately. You answer speedily. You answer confidently. And we know that as we decree and as we pray that you will grant the answer. I pray for everyone, whatever disease, whatever sickness, whatever financial constraint, and whatever the pressure, the pain, whatever may be the problem in your mighty way, in your good way, take everything away in Jesus' name. I pray that the healing for every form of disease. Having names or not having names, Lord, I pray, take all that disease away. Heal your people in Jesus' name. Everyone there over the radio, everyone there over the television, everyone there, wherever they are, any part of the world, your power cuts across everywhere, everyone. Fulfill your promise in Jesus' name. Everything they have asked you, everything they have desired, of you, everything they have requested of you in their heart, and they have said, oh Lord, do this in your faithfulness. Do everything in Jesus' name. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, cancel all those works of the devil, and fulfill your will, your word, in every life in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. And everyone will see the glory of God. Everyone will praise the Lord for speedy answer that we have given every one of us today in Jesus name Lord put testimony in every mouth thank you Lord because I know you have answered in Jesus name I pray 
Amen. It is done. It is done. Remember, no complaints. Remember, no more money. Remember, you are praising the Lord. Now, even before you say anything, the Lord has done it. And that final, amen, it's done. And whatever you couldn't do before, you couldn't bend before, you couldn't see before, you couldn't hear before, you couldn't walk or run or whatever, you can do it now because the Lord himself has touched you and healed you and delivered you. He has answered your prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I will say, we'll take over and uh, we'll hear testimonies of what the Lord has done today. Praise the Lord. Let the church say at the final amen you will testify. Amen. Amen. Look at the person on your side, eyeball to eyeball, and tell him, tell her, Amen. And at the final amen today, you will carry go. Salvation, carry go. Healing, carry go. Deliverance. Every kind of miracle you need tonight, the Lord will shower his blessing upon you in Jesus' name. At the final amen, I will testify. Say that at the final, amen, I will testify. Father, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. You're a good God, a great God, for God so loved the world. And that love is still here today, flowing in the direction of everyone. I pray, Lord, tonight, none will miss the manifestation of the love of God in Jesus' name. Bless everyone without exception. Men, women, brothers, sisters, young people, children, everyone here, everyone everywhere. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. It is done. So be it in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at Daniel chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince angel, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. There shall be a time of trouble. Does that surprise you? Before the flood, a time of trouble. At the time of the flood, a time of trouble. Does that surprise you? When Nimrod, when he raised up the tower of Babel, they were scattered, a time of of trouble. Look at Joseph, a time of trouble. And look at the children of Israel in Exodus, and they were in Egypt, a time of trouble. And look at them as we were passing through the wilderness, a time of trouble. They got to Canaan, and all the confederacies of the kings, they were against them, a time of trouble. Move on fast and come to the New Testament when Jesus came. Look at the situation of the land, a time of trouble. And then it now says, as we come to the end, end of the age, at the end of life, have you read your newspapers of late, a time of trouble? Have you listened to the news on television or radio, a time of trouble? Have you looked in depth in Africa, every country from here to there, a time of trouble? Are you hearing about what is going on in the West, whether it's Russia or it is Ukraine? or whether it is, uh, you know, all these other places in the West, everywhere, north and south and east and west, a time of trouble. Trouble has always been there, but there's going to be a time of the climax of trouble. But thank God you have Christ. 
the Prince of Peace. And in all the trouble, the Lord will preserve your life. Yeah. He will watch over you. He will thrash. He will destroy. He will get rid of every kind of trouble in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Even tonight, any trouble there, the Lord will clear it away. Even tonight, here at the Alpha location, and then over there, online, where you are. What's troubling you tonight? What's perplexing your mind tonight? Christ, the one that stops and quells and calms the stormy sea uh, come into your life tonight and all the storm all the trouble all the trauma all the difficulty all the perplexity everything it will take away and then it says there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same to that same time and at that time it says that people shall be delivered our people shall be delivered your family will be delivered our friends will be delivered anyone that comes and it says I believe in Christ I hide in Christ I believe that he came so that all my problems are solved our people will be delivered tonight everyone that shall be found reaching in the book everyone found reaching in the book it's not saying in a book if it says in a book that means everybody that book or that book or that book everyone that is written in one register or the other but it says everyone that shall be found reaching in the book that's talking about the book of life where god puts the names of the people that have believed on him and everyone who has his name in that book troubles over tribulation over and all those things that try to bury you alive tonight, everything over in your life. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust. Now, how does somebody sleep in the dust? It's not saying those who sleep on the ground. No, not that. It's not saying those who sleep on the dust. Not that. Those who sleep in the dust. Who are those people? Somebody dies, and then they dig a hole. They dig some of the burial ground, and they dig the dust out and they lay the person is dead they lay him there and they put all the dust back and is lying down and sleeping in the dust that means those who have died and they are buried it says and many of them that sleep in the doors of the earth shall awake it's talking about the day of resurrection it says they'll hear the voice of the son of man and they will awake some to everlasting life those who are reaching in the book of life and they will arise they'll awake they resurrect and they go to eternal life some to shame and everlasting contempt to shame and everlasting contempt when they were here they didn't serve the lord their names were not written in the book of life maybe they were religious maybe they can quote psalm 23 maybe they can read the lord's prayer in matthew chapter 6 but they did not believe on the lord jesus christ and their lives did not show that they believed the lord they will also rise but they rise to the resurrection of the unjust the resurrection of the unrighteous look at verse 3 here in verse 3 it says and they that be wise you'll be wise tonight I said you'll be wise tonight there are only two kinds of people in the world the wise and the foolish and it's not talking about the wisdom of books 
the wisdom you gather from the library, the wisdom you gather from the philosophers, the wisdom you gather, all those philosophers of the past, have you heard about them, Socrates and, and Plato and Aurelius and all those people, all those people, they themselves were not wise, they might be worldly wise, they were not heavenly wise, they might be temporarily wise, they were not eternally wise, they were not wise in the things of God, in the things of heaven. They were walking on the broad way, the broad way that leads to perdition. But the have made a choice, the wisest choice you can make in your life. And they that be wise, Timothy, I thank God for you because you have known the scriptures which is able to make you wise unto salvation. That the wisdom is talking about wise. They that are wise shall shine at the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. I came to show you tonight how the light will shine in your life. I came to show you tonight how to turn from being foolish and then you become wise. I came to show you tonight how your name will be rich in the book of life and heaven will recognize you and any trouble in your life, everything will vanish away. Tonight I'm talking on becoming wise and shining as stars till and beyond the end till the end from now until the end how you become wise and how you become a shining star until the end and then after the end has come and you have gone to the other side and you carry that wisdom of salvation with you then you rise up and you will live in life eternal forever and ever i pray that this this heavenly wisdom will come into your life. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the time of trouble before the end. The time of trouble before the end. That's verse one. And then number two is the triumphant and the transgressors. The triumphant and the transgressors at the end. And sometimes those two people, they live in the same house, one triumphant, the other one a transgressor. Sometimes they, they go to the same church, like the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, and they have heard about the coming of the Lord. Sometimes those two people, they carry the same kind of lamp, they carry the same kind of doctrine. One is triumphant, the other one is a transgressor. What happens to them? at the end. Number three, the treasure for the transformed who endure. Those are the people, they have the treasure of salvation, the treasure of the life of Christ, the treasure of the hope that they are looking forward to when Christ will come, the treasure of the transformed who endure and be endure to the end. I pray you'll be a treasure in the sight of the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at number one here. Number one, the time of trouble before the end. Um, you know, let's conduct an interview. Welcome to this village. In this village, all the people that are living here or that have lived here since the village, you know, became a recognized village. Has there been anybody that lived all through without any trouble before their end? They said no. We go to another town and we say, has anybody lived here? In this town, in this city, nobody has ever seen trouble there before they got to the eye. They said nobody. We say it's because it's Africa. And then we go to America, and we go to Canada, and we go to Europe. We go to all those places, and we say, here, we come. We're making some research. We're finding out anybody lives here any time, any age, any generation that had no trouble before he finally came to his end, they said there's nobody, everybody on earth 
everybody that has ever lived. Everybody that will ever live. The world is a place of trouble. And as people go on to the end of time and to the end of the age, there's going to be a climaxing trouble. That's why we're looking at this and we say there's a time of trouble before the end. We've read it already in uh, Daniel chapter 12 verse 1. Look at Psalm 50. I'm looking at verse 15. In uh, Psalm 50 verse 10, call upon me in the day of trouble. The Lord knew that in the world in which we live is a world of trouble. It's an environment of trouble. As long as there's a Satan in the world, as long as there are evil powers and evil people in the world, there'll be trouble. But the Lord is saying, you don't have to be swallowed up by the trouble. You don't have to drown in the sea of the trouble. I'm here. And you can call upon me, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee. Amen. Amen. And I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Maybe there's trouble in your life tonight. And maybe it started in a small way, in a little way, and you said I'll manage that. I'll tolerate that. I'll overcome that. And the thing was increasing. And everywhere you turn now, the trouble is there. You can see right, left, center, in front, everywhere. In the night, you thought your rest. Look at the trouble there. And in the day, you thought, now this is daylight. Anything going to trouble me, I will see. And look at the trouble, and you look around. You cannot see with the physical, natural eyes, but you know trouble is there. And the Lord says, stop looking. Come to the Lord tonight. Come Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Uh, redemption has come for you today. Deliverance, salvation has come for you today. My question is, my question is, why do we have trouble? Look at Second Chronicles chapter 15, and I'm reading from verse 3. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. It says, for a long time now, Israel, they had the God of the covenant, and the covenant of a covenant keeping God but nobody to teach them. They asked the Bible, they will not read. They read, they will not understand. They understood, but they will not follow. They will not obey. It says for a long season, think about your life. That, that's a problem that for a long season, we had been without the true God. We had some private God somewhere, some strange God somewhere, some idolatrous God somewhere. They God and the prince of this world, but we were without the true God and without a teaching priest, without somebody to teach us. Many people are not in saying teaching, the teaching of the word of God. And it is that teaching and understanding that will clear the trouble away. And then it says, without law or lawless. And because we acted lawless, we behave lawless as if we are a law to ourselves. And you cannot be. It's like the law of gravity is there. You say, I don't care for the law of gravity. I'm going to set up another law that will contradict the law of gravity. You cannot do that. The law of gravity is to give us understanding and knowledge that when you climb a tree, be very careful because the law of gravity is at work. If you fall down from there, trouble will begin. Sickness will begin. You can crush your bones and you can die. The law of God is there spiritually, but the people were not walking by the law. God, look at verse 4 here. In verse 4, but when 
they in their trouble. They in their trouble. Because we didn't have the guiding light and the guiding law. And we just uh, did whatever we wanted to do. We got into trouble. They got into trouble. And when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, in those days, in those times, there was no peace, trouble to him that went out, not to him that came in, but great vexations were upon the inhabitants of the countries. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, a nation was destroyed of nation, trouble, and city destroyed of city, trouble. God did vex them with all adversity. Because we forsook God and forsook the law of God, trouble came. But now in verse 7, in verse 7 it says, Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Trouble will pass away today. As you come to the Lord and say, I realize the problem, I realize the source, I realize the ground, I, I, I realize what projected and brought trouble into my life, into my family, even into our nation. The trouble, as we turn to the Lord, our time of trouble will be over. Your own time of trouble will be over in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 33, and I'm reading from verse 2. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 2. Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning. This our salvation also in the time of trouble. See that? Our salvation, our Savior is the only one. Trouble is there and it is all over the world and in Daniel that we read, it said there shall be a time of trouble. And now we're praying to the Lord and we're saying, oh Lord we need your salvation, we need your forgiveness, we need your mercy so that in this time of trouble we will survive. You will survive in Jesus' name. Now, how does that come? Look at verse 24 of that same chapter 33. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. Trouble of sickness will vanish away. The trouble of demon possession will vanish away. The inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. Why? The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. That's how trouble clears when you've been in trouble and then you cease because I've not obeyed, I've not responded properly to the word of God. Say, God, I'm sorry about that. I will no more go in the wrong direction. Forgive me. And God is so merciful. He forgives immediately. And then he says, look at that trouble of sickness and that trauma of demon possession and that confusion that wants to scatter your life I forgive you I remove your sickness away tonight it will happen in Mark chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 8 in Mark chapter 13 verse 8 here are the words of Jesus Christ himself for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be earthquakes in diverse different friends, many places, and there shall be famines and troubles. Christ said, as we're getting to the end of the age, he said, there will be pestilence, there will be earthquakes, and there will be famines, not having enough to eat, and we're hungry. And gives us answer. And we go into compulsory fasting. We didn't want to fast, but what can we do? The little child does not uh, have what to eat. Have you noticed, have you read the news in the world? How many people are dying of malnutrition? Because there is nothing to eat. And even what they eat, have you seen the pictures of those people that go to the dunk hill and they go to the refuse uh, areas and they're trying to pick what other people have thrown there 
with all the germs and everything, what could they do because there's no food in a time of famine? And he says, trouble. And these are the beginnings of sorrow. If trouble is there, even at the time of the end now, how can we be free from that trouble? Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it tells us, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. All nations, there'll be trouble in all those nations as we're coming to the end of it. And it is the gospel, the gospel of grace. It is the gospel, the gospel of the open door. It is the gospel, the gospel of our salvation. It is the gospel, the gospel of his power. It is the gospel, the gospel of emancipation. It is the gospel, the gospel of the love of God and we preach that gospel and people link up with that grace and they link up with the opportunity this is my chance and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and we're saved although there be troubles all over in all the nations yet as we give our lives to the Lord and our names are written in the book of life danger will pass over you premature death will pass over you and the trouble of the age the trouble of our time all that trouble will pass over your life in Jesus name that's what Jesus said look at this in John chapter 14 reading there from verse 1 it says let not your heart be troubled how what should I do? The trouble is there, and the trouble oversweeps the whole earth, and we read about it. There is no day in the news, in the media, that they'll not report that this trouble is there, this trouble is there. Everybody is perplexed. Everybody is troubled. And Christ, why do you say we should not allow our hearts to be troubled? You believe in God. Believe also in me. And then the end of your trouble has come. Believe in God and believe also in me. Look at verse 27 there. In verse 27, it says, peace I leave with you. You belong to him. You believe in him. The storm is on the sea, and the seas of the world, they are all raging, and there's trouble everywhere. He says, you know me as your savior. I know you as my follower, believer, believe in God. And now my peace, I live with you. My peace give I unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. It's all over. I said it's all over. My troubles are gone. My problems are gone. I thought you would say that for yourself. And all those, all those things, trauma, trouble, tribulation, this and that, gone, gone forever, out of your life in Jesus' name. Neither let your heart be afraid. Look at 2 Thessalonians. I'm reading from chapter 1, and we're looking at verse 7. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 7, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Paul, tell me, what do you mean? Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will, not I mean, I will give you rest. And when Christ, your Savior, your Redeemer, gives you rest, trouble is over. All those challenges of the devil, they are over. It says to you who are troubled, rest with us. He's saying, he had now got the rest. The life of Saul was restless. 
There's no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. During the day, he went an injurious man, a dangerous man, and he clamped down on everyone that calls on the name of Jesus. In the night, he could not sleep. Everything that he did during the day, all the wickedness and the violence and destruction he did during the day, he did not have rest. And he was still going to Damascus, and on the way, Jesus met him, called his name, Saul, Saul, what are you kicking against the freaks? It's a hard thing for you to do that. You don't sleep in the night. You don't enjoy your life. You have the trouble. You have the trauma. And yet you don't know the way to stop. He looked up and said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. Not I was, I am Jesus. He was the one that they killed. They nailed him on the cross. And he said, I'm still alive. And was still speaking. He was buried and then he rose again and he went to heaven at the right hand side of the Father. And he's praying for you. And he's praying for everyone. And now you saw this man restless and troubled. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you persecuted. Hard thing for you to kick against the Freaks, I want to change then. I don't have rest. I'm restless. I have trouble. What should I do? Go to Damascus. I shall be shown you what you will do. And now as he got there, he prayed to the God of heaven. And he prayed in the name of Jesus. And he became a brother, a believer, a child of God. His name reaching in the book of life. And Ananas came and said, brother Saul rest had come and now all through his life there was peace all through his life there was rest all through his life salvation has come assurance has come and then he says i know that a crown of righteousness is laid up for me in heaven rest forever that's why he said are you still troubled you're in the jewish religion are you still calm and rest with us and you're in the gentle religion and you're still Still trouble come I found it I got it all my troubles are over and all the trauma and the palpitation and the fear of eternity all that is gone away from me to you who are troubled rest with us I invite you tonight come and rest in the Lord all your troubles in Jesus name are over Sicknesses over and all the challenges you have from the powers of darkness and they trouble your life and torment your life they drive you here they drive you there come and rest with us and have the rest of Jesus Christ and the peace of the Lord your troubles tonight by the grace of God and the mercy of God over in Jesus name I'm coming to point number two now point number two is the triumphant and the transgressors at the end look at this we're looking at Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt uh, can i explain it to you two kinds of people look at lazarus look at the rich man two kinds of people lazarus he knew God, the God of Abraham and the Abraham of God. Look at the rich man on the other side. He, he knew the name of Abraham, but the grace and the faith of Abraham he did not have. He was a Jewish man, and he called Abraham father, but he didn't have the personal relationship with the God of Abraham. God was not his father and then uh, the poor man Lazarus died he was buried sleeping in the dust of the earth and then the rich man died and he was buried sleeping in the dust of the earth but is their body 
that was buried. Lazarus' body, not his soul, not his spirit. Immediately Lazarus died, his spirit, his soul, was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The body that's left in the dust. And then the rich man died and he was buried. It's the body that was buried, but then he lifted up his eyes in hell, in torment. And then he looked on the other side he saw the spirit body of Lazarus and then he also saw the spirit body of Abraham their bodies had been buried but now he saw the spirit and he said father Abraham I want you to send Lazarus he knows me I know him. He'll dip the finger in water and cool my tongue. And Abraham said, that time is gone. His spirit, his soul was being troubled and tormented. The trouble he didn't see on earth, he was now having that trouble. And it will be forever and ever. And now that Lazarus, like the thief on the cross who repented, I say unto you, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. The body was still there on the cross, but his soul went with Christ to paradise. And now, on the day of resurrection, what will happen? The body in the grave, the spirit in the great beyond will come together and the whole man the body the spirit the soul will now go to the everlasting life in heaven or everlasting contempt in hell and we can make our choice. There are only two kinds of people. The people who believe in Christ, who believe in the Lord, and their names are written in the book of life. And then eventually, when the day of resurrection will come, they will rise up unto life everlasting. But the people who remain in their native, depraved, and sinful self, and they keep on living, living in sin, without giving themselves the chance to believe in the Lord. They will perish, and they'll be there forever and ever. I pray that today you will make the right choice. Jesus will be your Savior. And when the day of resurrection comes, you will rise up, and you will have have everlasting life in Jesus' name. Uh, look at John chapter 5, uh, two kinds of people and two kinds of resurrection. J uh, John chapter 5, uh, verse 28, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Look at verse 29, uh, and shall come forth all in the graves shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation either life justification or on the other side damnation i pray you will have the resurrection of the just in jesus name acts chapter 24 verse 15 in acts chapter 24 verse 15 and have hope toward god which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, one of the just, two of the unjust. Resurrection, the just. Those who are justified by faith in Christ. Those who say, I am guilty. I know my sin. I know I'm a sinner. But I take you. I accept you. I believe you as my Savior. He justify you. You become just. But the people that say, I don't need salvation. I'm good. As good as I am. Maybe you are good. You are good for the earth. But you are not good enough for heaven. You are good to your neighbors. 
But your neighbors do not see your imperfection. You're not good enough for heaven. I'm all right. You appear all right to your carnal mind. And what do you know? What do you know? Even, even if you go to the hospital, the x-ray can see what you cannot see. What do you know? And you say, I'm all right. Before you get to the x-ray of man, I'm all right. Now you get before the x-ray and you say, uh -uh, what did you wait until this time? You're almost dead. You're not all right. If you are not all right before the x-ray of man, how do you say you are all right before the x-ray of God? You are not all right. If you're going to be all right, come before the Lord and say, Jesus, you are my savior. Jesus, you are my substitute. I know you died for me. And I'm, I cannot justify the things I do. You are the only one to make me just. Tonight, he'll make you just. He'll forgive your sins. He'll change your life. He'll make you a transformed person in Jesus' name. And then he will put your name in heaven. He'll be watching over you here. He'll be watching over your name over there in heaven. And when you leave this place, you are going over on the other side. You will get there. Where are you? I said you'll get there. The mercy of God will come to you. The justification of the Lord will come to you. The salvation of the Lord will come unto you. I'm coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the treasure for the transformed who endure to the end. The people that endure unto the end Praise the Lord. Grace will never leave your life. Mercy will never leave your life. Look at Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine. The foolish will not shine. They don't even shine in this world. Look at those uh, children who go to school. The wise who read to understand. The wise child who reads to retain those are, those are the ones that have joy on hand but the one that is foolish and he does not know that he ought to read or to understand or to retain they are disappointed on the reckoning day the day of examination but the people who are wise look at the husband the a wise husband knows how to keep the wife happy he knows how to keep the wife fulfilled that's a wise husband but the one who is foolish he doesn't care yeah, she think, he thinks it's a tenant at home and will not even give her attention. Their families break up. They're not wise. In this life, the people that have the peace and the joy and the fulfillment and the people that have the goodness, even in this life, they're the people who are wise. And then uh, when it comes to preparing for heaven, it's the people who are wise. And it says they that the wise shall shine at the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. The people, number one, they are wise. Number two, they themselves turn from sin unto the Savior. And then what they have got, they give to other people and they turn others unto righteousness. Let me show you the wise people. When looking at Proverbs chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 33 the wise hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not those are the wise people repent the mercy of God is waiting for you those are the wise the people that listen to that instruction be wise and they repent and turn away from their sin and then you say follow me I will make you fishers of men the people that listen to that instruction and they follow Christ and they follow him because it's going to heaven the people that uh, they say what should I do to be saved believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy 
thine house. The people that listen to that and they say, I believe, I believe, I believe now, I believe throughout life, I believe for eternity. Those are the wise people. Look at verse 34 there. In verse 34, it says, Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gaze, waiting at the post of my doors. Verse 35, it says, for whoso findeth me, findeth life. Uh, Christ is calling you, and he says, listen to my instruction. I'm here to be your savior. I'm here to be your redeemer. And you listen to that instruction, you are wise. And then he says, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Verse 36, in verse 36, but he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. He that says, ah, I don't want salvation, I don't want uh, reconciliation with God. I don't want to listen to instruction. It says, he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. It says we come to the Lord and we say, Lord, here am I. I give myself, I yield myself unto you. Then we become wise. Look at Proverbs 23 and I'm reading from verse 15. Proverbs 23 3, verse 15, my son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice even mine. My son, you know what's good, salvation, eternal life, how God will take care of you here on earth, and he'll take care of you in eternity, and if you listen to that, if you pay attention, if you give your life to the Lord, my heart that shall rejoice even mine. You see, how do I do that? How do I do that? Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, my son, give me thine heart. That's the wisest thing you can do. My son, give me thine heart and say, I surrender. I give myself unto you. Here I am. And then you are wise now and you are wise till all eternity. And let thine eyes observe my ways. Matthew chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 25, and we're looking at verse 1 here. It says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. In verse 2, it says, and five of them are were wise and five were foolish. The wise, they took their lambs and then they had the oil, the oil of grace in their lamb. And the foolish, they took the lamb, but they had no oil, no grace, no love, no faith in God. And he said, we're all waiting for the coming of the Lord. And at midnight, it says, they had the voice that the bridegroom is come. And the people, uh, you know, they trimmed their lambs but the foolish, they had no light because they had no oil. They had no grace. The love of God was not in them. And the, and the forgiveness of God and the goodness of God did not show up in their lives. And um, so they went to the wise. They said, give us of your oil. We can't share grace. The grace you have, you need all the grace you have. The salvation you have, you, have all, you need all the salvation you have. The forgiveness you have is only for you. The forgiveness cannot be shared. Okay, I have forgiveness. You take a bit of the forgiveness and you take a bit of the grace. You do not have anything left. We cannot transfer the salvation to another person. The wise must have the oil of grace and the faith and the love and the confidence in God. And then uh, when the bridegroom came, the wise went in. And the foolish went to scout for oil and all that. And you know, there are, there are fake uh, oils, and you know, you put that in your vehicle, and the whole thing knocks, knocks off. And so they seem to, they want to hurry, hey, give me quickly, whatever level you have, you have super, you have ordinary, you have whatever, just give me. And they got something they thought was oil. By the time they got there, the door was shut. Call upon the Lord when he's near, call ye upon him 
Shema while it's near he can hear your prayer. Let the wicked forsake his way and your righteous man his thoughts and let him call upon the Lord for God today the day of grace and the day of his love. The Lord will forgive and the Lord will set you totally free and then your name will be in the book of life in heaven. After, after, after that the foolish people came. The graceless people came and the people that did not have any connection with the Lord they came and they said Lord Lord we're here it's too late the door is shut but today the door is still open for you the door is still open the door of grace is still open for you and the Lord will forgive you today he will save you today. You'll be wise today. And they that be wise, they'll shine forever and ever as the stars of the firmament of heaven. Today is your day. I said today is your day. What are you there? Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You want to escape the trouble, the storm, the dangers of the world in which we live. Right now, you can raise up your hand. Thank you. God bless you. The door is open now. Don't wait too long until the door is shut. Raise up that hand and stand up. As you stand up, you are telling the Lord, Oh Lord, I'm here. I want your grace. I want your love. I want your forgiveness. I'm making a wise choice now. And I want this salvation that comes from Christ. As you are raising up your hand, please stand up. And you are telling the Lord, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. You raise up that hand and then you stand up. God bless you there. Online, television, radio. Anywhere you are, any country you, you are, and you are hearing my voice now, this is your day of grace. I'll pray with you now. Raise up one hand, lay the other hand on your chest. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everyone standing now. Forgive them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you set them free. And on this day of grace, grant them your grace, your forgiveness, your love, and your mercy. Write their names in the book of life in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O Lord. Saved, free, forgiven. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our uh, Ikiti State Overseer will now come and lead us in this time of counseling. Thank God you are now still. Keep standing. The counselors are coming your way. Keep standing. The counselors are coming to attend to you. You have given your life to Jesus. You are welcome to that new life. Counselors are around you now. Keep standing until they are sent to you. All the locations outside here, let's identify the converse and attend to them. A counselor will give you a piece of paper, kindly fill on the information required, fill them correctly, and return them to the counselors. They will also give you a special package from the convener of this program at GS, and God will bless you. Online audience, if you are watching online and you have given your life to Jesus, after this pastor's message, there is a link, gckhq.org slash connect below your player. 
click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Radio audience, television audience, also if you are giving your life to Christ, as you hear this message through radio, 